We have uh, the native Virginia creeper. We have our native grape. And then we've just documented this, this guy on the property, and this is porcelain berry, which is an invasive plant. And they all look very similar at certain times of the year. They're all vine-like uh, plants. And they can be overlapped and found in a wide variety of habitats. Um, some of the characters that we'll look for with leaf on is that you have this uh, three to five lobe leaf on the porcelain berry. It has fairly deeply furrowed or deeply notched leaves. Um, but there's quite a bit of variability as you look up and down the stem. Here's a young leaf. It looks almost like a, a maple leaf by Burnham kind of shape. Um, and then you have other leaves that look almost grape-like in some capacity in some, some ways or another. Yeah. With the grape, they're sort of large and palmate leaves, but you can still see that there are at least three, maybe five lobes. You can identify them, but sometimes they become so wide and palmate that they're, it's almost indistinct, it's difficult to distinguish each lobe in some, in some. And then here's a young grape that you can see that has Again, three to five, but um, lobes. And then with Virginia creeper, it's instead of lobes, it's almost like it's a it's a um, leaflets. Leaflets, yeah. It's a it's a uh, um, compound. compound leaf. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> Multiple people here. This is good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we have leaflets, and so there can be anywhere from three to five. Mostly, you'll see them as five leaflets, but on young ones, you can see that they come out as three. And this, this plant is usually confused with poison ivy. In this case, we're looking at three vines that each have tendrils, and so that's the first thing we look at. And um, they all have a tendril, and if you look at each of the tendrils that are on these plants, the tendrils fork. And I'm, I have to give credit where credit is due here. This is information that was provided by Bill Moorhead at a invasive native plant look-alikes course that he Shout that out. sponsors. <laughs> yeah, and so we're, I'm using the characters that he, um, that he identified as being some of the best throughout the year. But the, the tendrils are four. They, um, now you're speaking of Virginia creeper. In this well, case. actually, in all, in all species, all the species, the tendrils will fork. In other words, two tendrils? Yes. Yeah, so you'll have one main tendril coming off the oh, stem, and then, and then they divides. splits. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. It splits into two into two sort of smaller tendrils. And then, um, but you can look at the, um, you can look at the, the Virginia creeper, and this is a, kind of an interesting adaptation that the Virginia creeper will form. At the end of the tendril, if it touches something like a branch that it's holding onto, it actually produces a nice little, what looks like a suction cup. And that's an important distinguishing oh, character. Maybe right there. Yeah, it's kind of like it forms a little suction cup, and that's what it begins to grab hold of the different objects that it's using to climb upon. And that's one important character. So if the leaves were off these plants, that would be the one way you could identify Virginia creeper. Another way would be um, that it would have a red or pinkish colored bud and stem. And, um, and the, the bud would be well, it's hidden right now. It's not fully developed, but you can see them. They're kind of they're kind of um, pinkish buds at the right at the, each of the little notches. Right at the grape, and here's the Virginia creeper. And where's the Virginia creeper? Right there. Gotcha. The next character we could look at is the pith, and the pith is this corky sort of substance in the center of each of the stems. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut open at a slight angle the, the stem so that it's, uh, we can expose the pith for these plants. The Virginia creeper pith is solid and it's white. Right now it's kind of a whitish green, but yeah, it's right solid right and it's white. Yeah. It's a brown pith on the grapevine. And, and then right there where there's a node, where the stem is coming off for a leaf, it's interrupted. It's like there's a chamber there's almost, a there's a wall. Yeah. And that, that's a great way to identify the different, the, the, the grapevine, to identify the white colored pith within the uh, porcelain berry. What attracts most people's attention to porcelain berry is that it has these multicolored berries 
that have little tiny dots on them that give it sort of a porcelain look. And grape, obviously, are going to be green when they're young. The berries will be green when they're young, and then as they mature, they'll become purplish, a, a nice deep violet purple. Um, and, and the Virginia creeper has the same thing. Uh, but the porcelain berry is, is attractive to a lot of people because they like to put this in their yard so that they can see these attractive berries, but unfortunately this is an introduced plant and it just begins to take over.